welcome to our video on bundle branch blocks. This is one of the more confusing topics for EMS students that are enrolled in electrophysiology courses, so we want to do our best here to get you guys squared away on the stuff you need to know and how you can easily identify the differences between the two types right and left. So as you can recall from, from class, when an impulse is traveling normally, it's sent from the SA node through the internodal pathways to the AV node, down the bundle of his, and then to the right and left branches, and then out to the respective fascicles and their Purkinje fibers. You can also recall that the heart does not have just two branches, it actually has three. The left ends up dividing into two fascicles, where the right divides up into one. So let's define what a bundle branch block is before we get into some of the more nitty gritty stuff. Um, bundle branch block is a conduction block in one of the bundle branches. When these blocks exist, the ventricles fire more slowly as the impulse travels cell to cell through the muscle wall instead of through the conduction system like normal. That's why we end up seeing these wider QRSs as kind of shown here. And we'll go over this in a second. So what causes bundle branch blocks? Well, lots of things. Ischemic events, MIs, deterioration from old age, prescription medications, recreational drugs, electrolyte imbalances, and so on. To get to a point where you're calling it a bundle branch block, a few things have to be in place. You have to have a QRS width that is greater than 0.12 seconds or three small boxes. And uh, you might ask, well, what happens if one of the QRS spikes is wider than another on my 12 lead? Uh, we always recommend go with the widest to make your interpretation. So let's get started here. With the right ventricle, uh, I'm sorry, with the right bundle branch block, we're gonna see these rabbit ear type things. And so the reason we see that is because what's actually happening is the uh, right side of the heart is firing cell to cell versus the left side of the heart is firing through the conduction system like normal. And so you get these two spikes in the QRS because you have two ventricles firing at separate times. And when that happens on our EKG machine, we end up, uh, the machine ends up combining those two QRS spikes and makes this rabbit ear appearance that we call R and R prime. And it gives us our textbook signature of wide QRS. <clears throat> so for a right bundle branch block, we need to have a few things. Again, greater than 0.12 second QRS, uh, rabbit ears in V1. Again, V1 is gonna be kind of the area we always check for these things because uh, we're going to have the best view um, of the uh, P wave and the QRS to a degree. The, so the one thing we're, uh, we're mainly looking for is the deflection before the J point. And the J point sits right here. It's this area before a deflection either up like this one shows or down like this one shows. So with a right bundle branch block, you're going to almost always have a positive deflection just before the J point. With a left bundle branch block, you're going to almost always have a negative deflection before the J point. So with a left bundle branch block, what we're really seeing is a general direction of the current moving away from V1. So you might remember that uh, each of the leads on a 12 lead EKG are camera views. Well, for V1, that camera view, the electrical current in the heart is moving away from that camera. Thus, we see the negative uh, current movement. So for a left bundle branch block, we have to have a QRS again greater than 0.12 seconds, and then deflection before the J point should be negative or down. And you can also see rabbit ears in V5, V6, and even lead one. So how do we recognize this quickly? Well, there's a couple one quick way that we can uh, learn this, and that's to remember uh, turn signals when you're driving. A right turn, you would take this turn signal and kick it up. Well, if we make our baseline after the QRS uh, our turning signal, are we kicking up and moving the uh, deflection upward or downward? If we're moving up, up and to the right, that's a right turn or a right bundle branch block. And the opposite is true. If we take this and we go down with our turning signal, or down before, or, uh, before the J point, we have a left turn or a left bundle branch block. 
So some last points on bundle branch blocks before we close. We need to be able to quickly recognize these things as they can mask other ECG changes. And we always remember the saying that says, treat the patient, not the monitor. And this is a perfect case for that point. You don't, just because you don't see evidence of a, a STEMI or an MI in the 12 lead, you still treat your patient as such if they're showing the typical signs of an MI. But don't get in the habit of writing off the patient because they have a bundle branch block, just because it can cover up some stuff or because it can be, it can be benign. It's an important finding and it requires more questioning and patient inquiry.